back, guys. I thought I would, you know, take a little time and show you how to make a wind chime. Um, spring is the time for wind chimes, mostly because it's the only time I can find these little plastic doodads. And I've tried everything from making them, to, and I, I don't know where to buy them. they got little holes in them. I take go to the dollar store springtime, load up as many as I can, like nasty, tacky wind chimes, rip them apart for the bits. So, we've got little plastic doodads. Just little, we're going to use three of these um, chimes. We've got our knocker, aluminum. Uh, here's my handy dandy pocket knife for cutting things up and unscrewing, and you'd be amazed how useful these things are in jewelry making. And I'm going to use a roll of wax linen thread. I was using whipping twine from a 30 year old boat kit. Can't find uh, the wax nylon or wax linen anymore. Can only find it in nylon. That's too big to fit most beads, which is kind of unfortunate because it was perfect. But I found this at a local craft store, so it's working pretty good so far. And as you can see, I've got. I've got um, the wind chime mostly set up already. I use recycled beads, which is to say beads that are chipped or cracked or they got little holes in them or, you know, they're kind of sharp or bit sticking off that I couldn't otherwise use. I have to check them out otherwise. You know, because you don't want to wear that, put that in a gla in, in your bracelet or your necklace and it's going to scratch somebody or break and that's no good. But outside, they shine, they tinkle, and if one or two beads, you know, cracks more or fall, even falls off, you're not really going to notice. So, let me uh, wrap these up. I need a little thread for these, and we'll get started. Hi guys, me again. Yeah, well, still, I guess I should say. <laughs> so I've got the thread it started it, the thread started what we're going to do is we're going to make a double loop oh darn things this is one of the tr two tricky parts in making the actual chime threading it and knotting it as you want your loops on your chime to be the same distance want all of your time. So what we're going to do, see we've got two loops started. It's kind of a little awkward. It's impromptu, but it works. We stick, I've done this on the video camera before, we stick the Sharpie uh, so then it's the chime is tight to the edge of the marker Take the loose end, feed that, uh, ack. <laughs> Through the hole, oh, keep, make sure to keep the chime on the sharpie. It's going to want to escape, like it's doing. Don't worry if the knot's not, you know, on top of the chime. You can wiggle that around later. We're gonna... Hi guys! There we go. Memory card got full. Learn something. Check the memory card before you make a video. So, up, up, the chime's tied up. What you want to do is measure from the knot to your last bead, stop tying the knot. Maybe you got the right length. So, see? And then you're going to want some extra because you got to have enough for the crossbar. And you're going to want some, some you know, maybe give it two inches the crossbar. And I usually give about an extra inch because I like putting a little extra 
space for beads up there. I think it looks nicer. So you got an inch there, two inches here, maybe three. And this is all for knotting. So, yeah. So you got your length, you got your extra inch, you got your two inch, three inches, and then you got your last bit for tying it all off. And if you've got extra, that's fine. It's better to have too much thread and not at all, and you have to repattern it. And you know, that gets really annoying. Okay, so this line here, the fourth line that's actually in front of the camera, is for the knocker. We're going to leave that one alone for now because it gets special treatment. So, um, I don't know if you can tell, but I've added in seed beads and e beads of the right colored to match the pattern. Well, you look and you're like, oh, Ocelot, I don't have any orange beads. Well, you know what you do? You take, maybe, you take a brown bead. And you put it in where, you know, between the red and the orange. And when it's hanging up in the sunlight, it's going to look fine. Nobody's going to notice that that's not an orange bead. And you can vary the sizes, vary the colors. Make sure you've got a couple extra. So, in case you drop one or one doesn't fit or you break it, I mean, that happens to everybody. You've got a couple extra. And you're going to want some more, too, because you've got a pattern. You've got to still have to have more for the knocker. And you're going to want some more for the crossbar and the hanging section. So, always good to have some extra beads. And I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to beat up a whole bunch. So, let me show you how to start. I like using just a plain e-bead. I think it's a little stronger than your normal seed bead and it fits both threads. So haul that down to the bottom. You know, here we go. We start with these. I picked this one because it's got a little lump on it and this has a wider hole. Oh no, you can't really tell on the video, but so we just do this. And then we have seashell. I like adding seashells in. I think they're a nice organic component. Um, they're pretty. They look nice. And if you add some more up top, which you can't really see up here, but there's another section of identical shells. I think it gives a nice kind of finishing look. You have one at the bottom, have one at the top. It's nice. So we're going to have some seashells in here. And we're just going to keep going. One of the tricks is, once you get all the threads started, is you want to keep them even. So even though you've got your pattern laid out exactly, it actually doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that all the beads, when they're lined up, are going to be the same size. Because you see here, these three are in the same row. But size difference. Maybe not so obvious on video, but this blue one here, a speckly one, a lot bigger than the clear speckly one. This one, much smaller. So you kind of want to keep adapting as you're going along the threads. So I'm going to stop now. I'm going to thread a bunch more. Okay, so if you hold on. Well, as you can see, I started threading. You got the red part done. And it's pretty much even. Got a good start on this. Let me do some more. Oh, camera's falling off. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you're wondering why I say a pocket knife is so useful. You ever find out? One of my beads has got a little piece of glass stuck in the middle. They're made out of rod. It happens sometimes. A little bit of glass dust, a little bit of the powder. Something gets jammed in there. So you just tap it on the end. Rub that around inside. You gotta do both ends. Oh, there it is. Little, can't see it, but yeah, a little piece of glass came out. That's another reason why handy dandy pocket knife. Best tool you ever need.